Thanks for leading us in our community singing tonight. And, uh, and thank you very much for joining in. You were singing well. And uh, it's good to get a bit of hearty singing to get us warmed up for the sermon. And uh, so it's lovely to have you all with us tonight. And we do trust that you'll be blessed as you meet with us here this evening. I want you to turn with me tonight to the last book in the Bible. And it's the book of the Revelation. And we're turning this evening to chapter 3. And I'm only reading one verse tonight, and it's Revelation chapter 3, and it's verse 20. Before I read this verse this evening, I want to make you aware that the one who is speaking is the Lord Jesus. It's not any apostle. It's not any great disciple. The one who is speaking is the Lord Jesus Christ. And in this verse tonight, this is what the Lord Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. Now let's take a moment again and let's read those words of our blessed Savior. Because I trust tonight these words are for someone's heart tonight. You're in this meeting this evening and you've never trusted the Lord as your Savior. You've never made Him yours. Now this is the Lord what He wants to say to your heart this evening. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. And we know that the Lord will bless the reading of his own precious truth. You know, friend, this evening, you can never tell, and I mean tonight, you can never tell who will land at the door of your home. You'll never land. You'll never know at times who the next person may land on the doorstep of your home. I remember one night, one Thursday night, I was preparing for a, for a Sunday service. And about half past eleven at night, the door knocked on our home. I went downstairs, and I was going well at my studies, and I says, who's that at our door at this time of night? You know what I think, like, don't you? I opened the door. Who was it? Policeman, fully dressed, hat and all on his head. And he tried to, tried to intimidate me. You know the way that they are. They put their thumbs in the flak jackets, and they do that. He was a PSNA man, but he couldn't do it as well as what the RUC used to do. He says, uh, are you Mr. George McConnell? Yes. And at this moment, I was starting to break out in sweat. You work in plum rates of plays? Yes. I'm here to investigate a complaint. I didn't know where to faint or run. We're here to investigate a complaint. Oh, well, so say, Constable, would you not be safe for coming in? Because the Land Rover was parked outside, the police Land Rover was parked outside. He says, come on in. Because I didn't want the neighbors gossiping. And I could see them peeping already. You know, oh, very nosy, very nosy. Say, come on in. No, we'll just talk here, he said. You, you don't listen to it. Well, just talk here. So, say, hey, Constable, for goodness sake, will you put me nerves, settle me nerves? What on earth have I done? He says, uh, We've had reports that you were driving very recklessly in Warringstown about three o'clock, and you were reported at doing, doing handbrake turns. This was six, about six years ago. He says, you're calling me. No, we have got good evidence. 
Well, if it's not like the evidence, you normally get it'll be good. <laughs> he says, no, he says, you've, we have reports in now that you were driving recklessly around Warringstown, <coughs> doing handbrake turns. And then he says, and that's the way he was getting on here. And he says, to, to sum it off, you were doing donuts. And I felt like saying to him, sir, what kind of a cuckoo do you think I am? He says, you are George McConnell. I says, yes. You do work in plum rate supplies, don't you? He says, yes. He says, you do drive a red Randall McGann, don't you? I says, no. And the next thing I heard, the thumping on the side of the Land Rover. Oh, McConnell, we got you, we got you, we got you. And there's a couple of policemen in the Land Rover I knew. And you know what? Isn't it funny how boys have nothing to do when they make a fun out of a boy like me? Are you talking about sweating? He was good. Do you ever notice a policeman when you're talking to him? I don't. They've always got a Belfast accent, haven't they? Do you ever notice that? What a you? See your driving license? But you know why I was never as glad? Why I was never as glad when he got the car on. I knew this boy was playing some sort of a trick. But here's, there was another night. This was half three in the morning now. And the door again knocked in our home. When the door knocks at half three, friends, it's a wee bit more serious, isn't it? Now I remember it well. The first time I heard the knock, I thought to myself, Tracy, uh, maybe I only heard that. But then it knocked again. And when it knocked the second time, boys, it sent shivers on my, down my spine, it did. I tried to ignore it, but it knocked the third time. And this time it knocked louder. Went down the stairs and opened the door, and here there was a young fella standing, stocious drunk. We brought him in, got him settled down, found out where he was staying or where he was living. We brought him home. But you know, friends, it's true, isn't it? You don't know who lands on the doorstep of your home. The door tonight is a solemn thing for any home. Like myself, maybe some of you here have grown up in a home where there was maybe a member of your family was a member of the security forces. My father was a police reservist. And every time you heard the door knock, boys, you, you treaded carefully. God wants to speak to us tonight, not about the door of your home. God wants to speak to you tonight about the door of your heart. And God has a message tonight, friends. And I trust and I pray tonight that you'll hear his knocking upon the door of your heart. The door of your heart tonight can only do two things. It can only close our blessed Savior out or it can allow our Savior in. And tonight, my dear unsafe friend, behold tonight the knocking of the nail-pierced hand upon the door of your heart. In this verse that we have read tonight, notice first of all the person, the person that is standing outside 
the door. Behold, I stand at the door. The person tonight standing outside the door. My dear unsafe friend tonight, the person standing outside the door of your heart, listen to me. It's God's Son. And my dear unsafe friend tonight, I want you to know that the person standing outside your heart's door tonight is the one who longs to be your Savior. He's the one tonight that longs, that longs to get in. He longs tonight to get into that heart of yours. He longs tonight to forgive you for your sins. He's longing tonight to get in to save your immortal soul. My friend, this evening, he longs tonight to get into your heart to save your soul. He longs tonight to be your Savior. He longs tonight to be your friend. He longs tonight to bring in life into your life. The person standing outside the door Behold, I stand at the door. Maybe you're here tonight. And your life is a sham. Your life's empty. Your life tonight has no meaning. I know how you feel. Because I was there myself one, one time. I remember that night very well. I was sitting in Ivan Corns' pub. We called him Curly because he hadn't a hair in his head. That's what we called him. Not too long to be calling me Curly. But I remember sitting in Ivan Corns' that night and I remember that's where God first spoke to me. Listen, God can speak to you anywhere. And I remember that night sitting in that bar stool. My life suddenly became a sham. My life suddenly was empty. My life suddenly had no meaning. And perhaps there's somebody in this meeting tonight, and that's where you are tonight. Your life's empty. Your life has no meaning. Oh, behold, my friend, the person standing outside your door. Let me speak to you tonight concerning this person. I want you to know, friend, the person that is standing outside the door, outside the door, friend, died on an old rugged cross for your sins. The one standing outside the door of your heart tonight, the one that pleads, the one that seeks admission, friend, died on Calvary's cross for your sins. He died on that cross to save your soul. He died to take your place. Listen, my dear unsaved friend. Do you know what the Bible teaches me? Without the Lord Jesus in your heart, you're on the down road that's taken you to hell. And hell's a real place. Hell's not a make-believe. Hell is not a scary story. The flames of hell is real. But thank God the person standing outside the door is real. And tonight he seeks admission. I want you to know tonight, dear unsafe friend, 
I want you to look at my blessed Savior that stands outside the door of your heart tonight. I want you to see him hanging on an old rugged cross with nails in his hands, with nails in his feet, with thorns upon his brow, the one that was mocked, the one that was scorned, the one who they cried, crucify him. Tonight he stands. He stands outside the door of your heart. The person that is standing outside the door, behold, I stand. An unsafe friend tonight. Now you listen to me. You be careful what you do with him. The person that is standing outside the door. But you know, in this verse tonight, not only do we see the person standing outside the door, we hear the plea. We hear the plea that is sounding upon the door. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. The plea that has sounded upon the door. And I wonder tonight, sinner friend in this meeting, do you hear the knocking of the nail pierced hand? You know, friend, maybe you do. Maybe you have been. Like me that night. You try to ignore it. But that, mock, that knocking doesn't go away, friends. It keeps coming back. It keeps troubling you. And it seems every time the knocking comes, it gets louder. Oh, friend, you've, you, you nearly pray it. You'll go away and, 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 and all the rest of it. But listen to me. You can't ignore it. You can't ignore the knocking of the nail-pierced hand. The plea that is sounding upon the door, behold, I stand at the door and knock. Tell me, sinner friend, have you heard it? Do you hear the knocking? Christ has many ways to knock. Christ has many ways to get your attention. My friend, the plea that is sounding upon the door. Am I speaking to someone here tonight? And you've been troubled. The knocking upon your heart's door is real. You almost would pray that it would go away and you're trying to ignore it. And maybe it does stop for a wee while. And then you're coming out of Asda maybe and you see a funeral going down the street and then the knocking starts again. Oh, if that was me in the coffin, where would I be? Maybe God has been knocking your door the door of your heart since yesterday afternoon and wondering, boys, if that was me that dropped in the garden, where would I be? Friend, God has many ways in knocking. And friend, this evening I'm telling you, he's, 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 he's knocking this evening and he's saying to you, let me in, let me in. You're a perishing sinner. You're on the road to hell. But I'm knocking. I'm not here to judge you. I'm here to save you. Let me in tonight. I want to save you. I want to forgive you. I want to give you life. Oh, the plea that is sounding upon the door tonight. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And friend, if he knocks upon your heart's door tonight, 
It's because he loves you. Every knock of that nail-pierced hand upon the door of the heart, it knocks in love and it knocks in mercy. Because tonight, my blessed Jesus is looking in. The person standing outside the door. The plea that is sounding upon the door. Ah, but my text I can see the people who are listening inside the door. Aye. There's the person standing outside the door. There's the plea that is sounding upon the door. I watch it because it speaks of the people listening behind the door. If any man heareth my voice and openeth the door, I will come in. My dear unsaved friend, not only tonight do I pray you'll hear the knocking of the nail-pierced hand upon the door of your heart, but I pray earnestly. In fact, I do more than pray. I plead that you will hear his voice. If any man, boys, I love that. Don't you be limited in the gospel. Don't you be limited in the gospel. If any man, thank God he died for the whosoever will. If any man, but I'm a Catholic, <laughs> thank God he knocks on the hearts of Catholics. But I'm a drunkard, thank God he can knock on the heart of the drunkard. Thank God. He cries through the door tonight, If any man hears my voice and openeth the door, I will come in. Do you hear his voice tonight? And you see, my dear unsafe friend, he cries through the door, I'm waiting. And I have been waiting. Open the door. Let me in. I want to save you. You tell me tonight, my dear sinner friend, you can ignore a voice such as that. And tonight for somebody in this meeting, opportunity knocks. Tonight, the door of your heart is being knocked by the Son of God and perhaps has been knocking for some time. And my friend, time and time again, he's been giving you these opportunities. Ah, but someday soon, the knocking's going to stop. Do you go home at bed at night? Do you find it hard to sleep? You put your head in the pillow and say, I'm nearly afraid to go to sleep just in case I don't wake up in time. I don't wake up again. I'm nearly afraid. I can tell you, friend, that's him knocking. And you're afraid, perhaps. You're afraid. You're afraid that death could come maybe this day, maybe tomorrow. Listen, that's him knocking this evening. The one that loves you the one that died for you on Calvary's cross, the one who shed his blood for you, knocks tonight on the door of your heart. You know, there's a wee lady in Glasgow. She lived in her own. And she was a real lover of Queen Victoria. She had pictures of Queen Victoria all over her home. And one day there was a cavalcade of cars driving down the back street, one of the back streets in Glasgow. And the wee woman was sitting in front of the fire. And the knock came to her door. The knock came to her door. 
She cried out, away and leave me alone. And the knock came again. I'm telling you, away. Don't be knocking my door again. Away, she says. Away we is. And the knock came the third day. Do you know what she said? For the last time, leave me alone. And after the knocking stopped, and she was sort of a nosy wee creature. She said, I wonder who was that knocking at my door? She ran and peeped through the curtains and to her shock and to her horror. Who was it? It was Queen Victoria. She ran down the garden path and she was stopped by one of the guards that was there. And this is what he said. Dear, you missed your chance. Now listen. If you hear him knocking on your heart's door tonight, in God's name, don't you close the door. Open the door tonight because this is where I'm going to finish. You see, in this verse tonight, we've got the person standing outside the door. It's God's Son, dear. It's God's Son that's standing outside your door. And we've got the plea sounding upon the door. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And you've got the people who are listening inside the door. Well, I'm going to finish with this one. There's the proposition that is concerning the door. Oh, why? Oh, I unsafe friend, there's a proposition concerning the door. If any man hears my voice, here it is, and openeth the door, I will come in. My friend, listen to me. If you've heard him knocking, And sometimes he does have to knock loud because we're hard of listening and hearing at times. And God has to knock loud. And if he's knocking, dear, or sir, there's a proposition that lays on your lap concerning the door. And that is tonight, keep it closed or open to him. He says tonight, if any man hears my voice <laughs> and openeth the door, he says, I will come in. Glory to God. He doesn't say I might come in. He says, I will come in. Boys, I remember it well the night I opened the door. I'm telling you, I'm glad I did. That night on the 26th of August, 1985, Remember bowing my head that night? I can take you to the very spot. I was wearing a pair of jeans and a pair of Dr. Martin boots. An old UDR jumper on me and cigarettes in my pocket. And that night I opened my heart's door and the Savior that night came in. I will come in. But tonight, friend, the handle of the door remembers on your side, and you must open the door for him to enter. You know, friend, the night I opened my door, I didn't know whether I walked home, run home, or floated home. 
because my blessed Savior that night not only saved me, but he satisfied me. People think, you know, to get saved, you have to walk about like a dipstick. Glory to God, you know. I can tell you. Now, listen to me. I'm not going to bluff you. Christian life has its troubles. It doesn't stop problems coming. But at least I know whatever problems come, I have my blessed Savior with me. And that night, I'm telling you tonight, friend, life has never been the same. He gives me someone to smile about. And he gives me someone to sing about. And he gives me someone to shout about. Praise his name. And I'll tell you this. The night he came into my heart, he has been with me ever since. And he'll not only be with me in my living, he'll be with me in my dying. Did you know that? Yes. He'll be with me in my dying. Because when he comes in, he comes in to stay. Now, here's where I draw the line. You close your heart's door on him. Now, you listen to me. I'll, I, I don't want to leave this pulpit guilty of not warning you. But you mark my words. If you keep your heart's door closed on him, you rest assured you'll find he'll have heaven's door closed on you when you die. How do I know that? You read the first chapter of Proverbs and you read these words, 24. He says, because I have called and ye refused, I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded then, when, then, when it's too late, listen to it, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. And they shall seek me early and shall not faint me, because they didn't open, because you didn't open when I knocked upon your door. Friend, tonight all I can ask you to do is listen to me. Let him in tonight. Open up the heart's door and say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I'm a sinner. I repent, Lord. I'm sorry for the sins that I've, that I've done, but, but Lord, come into my heart. Come in and be my Savior. You know what will happen? He will. He will. Behold, the person standing outside the door. Behold, the plea that is sounding upon the door. Behold, the people listening behind the door. And behold the proposition concerning the door. Open your heart's door. Let him in. Or keep it closed. And keep him out. I trust tonight you'll be wise. Do you want to know something else? It could be the last night you'll ever hear the knocking of the nail-pierced heart upon the door of your heart. Let's take a wee moment now and let's bow our heads in prayer. And tonight, my friend, every eye closed, please. I want every eye closed. I want every head bowed. And I want you to really think and 
God's people now. I want you to really pray. And friend, tonight, perhaps in some way, you've heard the Savior's hand knocking upon the door of your heart, and for maybe weeks you've been troubled. And you've been pausing and you've been pondering, what shall I do? What shall you do? Run to the door tonight and open it. And let him in. He wants to be your Savior because he died to be your Savior. And don't be mad tonight in closing the Savior out who died for you. He died on that cruel cross to save your soul from going to hell. Ah, oh, friend, don't be mad and close that Savior out. Come to him this evening and open the door and say, Blessed Lord Jesus, I open my heart's door. Come in, Lord Jesus. Come in today. Come in to stay. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. And Father in heaven tonight, Lord, whoever is hearing the knocking upon their heart's door, Lord, don't stop knocking. Lord, knock louder. And knock so loud, Lord, that all they can do is but go and open their heart's door to Thee. Lord, give them the wisdom tonight to open the door and trust Thee while they may, for I pray in the Saviour's name. Amen.